what's going on you guys and welcome back to another video in today's video we're going to take a look at 5k video editing in luma fusion with the brand new gopro hero 9. we're going to take a look at the workflow around 5k footage do we have any lag on the timeline once we are editing the different footage and in today's video we're just going to do a plain uh, sort of raw cut just to get the feel of the uh, 5k editing we're gonna add some cinematic bars and we're gonna add some music and we're also gonna see if we can add some sound effects as well now i was actually looking forward to do this outside get, getting some like um, golden hour shots and stuff like that but if you take a look at the weather here in norway right now where i live you can see it's well, well it's not really appealing is it so i gathered a few uh, sample clips from yeah from my terrace i was i was just literally standing in the door opening and capturing some some footage hopefully we can turn this into some really awesome uh, like a cinematic vibe but we'll see once we get over to luma fusion so i have everything ready i have the samsung t5 here everything will everything in this video will be linked down in the description as well just in case if you figure that you want to get some of the gear that i use for my luma fusion editing as well so we have the samsung t5 here this is gold 500 gigabytes and we also have this uh, let's see i've been I mentioned this before, this is the Satechi Multi-Hub with three USB-A, one HDMI port, one um, internet port, and one USB Type-C for charging, SD card, and micro SD card. So this is basically what I will be using. Now I have the micro SD card, which I talked about in the uh, video I uploaded yesterday. This is the 32 gigabyte, which follow the GoPro Hero 9. So what I'm gonna do is to simply take this and plug it into the Satechi multi hub here and that we are good to go so i'm gonna turn on screen record now and we basically gonna do a full edit together so you can see the actual workflow around 5k editing with the with the gopro hero 9 black and luma fusion so bear with me this video is going to be a little bit long since we're doing a a complete edit together. I will put some timestamps as well in the comment section below and in the description so you can easily navigate if you want to skip to one part of the video. But I really do appreciate if you watch the entire video, of course. Now with that said, let's head over to the iPad over to LumaFusion and start importing some clip to our project and start uh, creating some cinematic uh, vibes. So now that we moved over to LumaFusion here, we're gonna go on and we're gonna create a new project. Uh, so we're gonna tap on the button here, which is the square with the plus, and we're gonna name this project here for GoPro 9. And we're gonna keep the frame rate at 23.98 because I was shooting with 5K 24 FPS on the GoPro. So we're gonna tap on OK. And since I plug this into the Satechi Multihub, we're gonna go over to, I think it's no name here, uh, yes, and we're gonna go on and we're gonna find our footage and here we can see we have a lot of different 5k video files as well now let's move down to the bottom here I think we have some of the ones I want to use down here and you can see it's just pouring down and it is not cool at all I was really looking forward to do something else than just filming everything from the door here or terrace. Uh, so we're gonna select this. Let's see, we can select this as well and this and this and this and this. And we're gonna go on and select all of these um, files here and then just drag them over to our timeline, just like that. So this might take some time to um, to download as well, depending on how long your clips are. As I say to everyone, make sure to keep your video files at a maximum of 10 seconds if you're gonna film in a really, really high resolution because the longer you film, the longer the clips will be and the bigger the chance is for the clips to actually be ruined on the transfer part between the um, uh, SD card over to your iPad. 
So here we have a couple of clips here. We have uh, this one and we have this one. So I think maybe this is going to be the opening shot. One of these, maybe this one. So we can delete that. And uh, I also set the ISO to 100 for this. And the shutter speed was um, 48 since I was shooting in, uh, in 24 FPS. We have a couple of different shots here. Let's see if a little bit wiggling. So we're going to make sure to uh, actually we're going to do the trimming part first here. So as you can see here at the beginning, we have some wobbling. So we're going to go to the point where it starts to move, make a cut and delete the part in front. And we're going to go to the end here right before it stops around here. Also do the cutting part. And we have uh, this smooth shot coming in here. Just make sure to cut a little bit before and it stops there and here you can see it's just pouring down anyway let's continue editing this video here so let's see we have the shot coming in there and let's stop it as you can see we get some water on the lens here and we don't want that so we're going to stop it right before that is coming in so around here and as you can see on the like the workflow on the timeline here, keep in mind this is 5K footage. Uh, even though the iPad and LumaFusion doesn't really support any export uh, above 4K, the workflow here is quite smooth. Let me check these settings that I have here. I have the best preview settings as you can see. So this should actually be lagging a little bit uh, if you ask me uh, th that's basically what i had with the um, with the 4k footage as well from the sony and from the uh, gopro hero 8. now if we take a look at one of the clips here just by tapping on one of the clips and then we go to the uh, info button here you can see that this is 23.98 fps 5k footage and 100 megabits per second it's 5k footage and there's literally in no playback lag or scrubbing lag or anything while I'm working on the timeline here. So this is really, really impressive. Now let's get back to the cutting part here. I'm going to find a point there. Just cut it. And this one, we can start it around here and delete that. We can move over to this point uh, we might do some additional trimming once we get to the uh, music part and so on depending on on um, what type of music we choose and how we want to to finish up this this project here that looks good and we might change the order of the video files as well so we're gonna have this start there and it's going to end around here. And we're going to have this one starting there. And ending there. And the last one here can start there. And end here. So now we've basically done uh, a lot of trimming to the clips here. I think we missed the first one, but this is something that I don't want to use. And uh, I'm not sure. Yeah, this is the one that I want to use as an opening shot. So we're going to just trim it down to this point. And um, here we have sort of the reveal shot, which is going to be the start. Now, I don't want this to be five seconds, so I'm going to keep it like something like that and do a cut to that and we have the next one here which is the moving forward clip and i think this is going to end around there and it can actually start around here when we have some movement in the shot it's really important that we that we um, start the shot with some movement so if i take this clip here and pull it back you can see we have a static shot here there's basically no movement in the shot if you take a look on the uh, on the top here and uh, then suddenly it starts and we don't want that because if we play this back it's going to look like we're going to have a stop and then it's going to start so we want to have the movement in the shot as well so we're going to start it around here so if we do a playback of that we have the movement and this 
and we have the movement in that. Then we come over to the movement again, and it's always movement in the shot. So we always have a flow of motion uh, in the video that we want to show. So now that we added all the clips to the timeline, there's no scrubbing, there's no lag whatsoever, as you can see here, we're scrubbing perfectly fine through all the clips. And I, again, I must say, I'm really, really impressed with uh, with this, because I was actually expecting a lot of lag uh, when editing so many clips on the timeline. And we're not gonna go through like um, a hard test of uh, of this in, in today's video, like using blending modes and, and stuff like that. I'm gonna keep that to a different video. Now, I don't want the sound uh, at this point in the video files here. So what I'm gonna do is to simply tap on the speaker. So now we muted everything and we can go over to files here and we can go over to a place where we have some music. Uh, let's see here. I think I have some, uh, let's see, art list. I think I'm going to use art list for this. I think we have some cinematic uh, music here. This one is one I used before. Let's take a look at that. Maybe a little bit too happy for the, <laughs> the, the scenery. That could be a nice fit. We can drag that down to the timeline. And at the end here, when we are, uh, when we have trimmed down the, the music, uh, I'm gonna give you a tip on how you can end the music as well. Here. Yeah, something around here. So we're going to do a cut there and drag this over to the timeline here and uh, over to the beginning. I mean, and let's pinch to zoom in. Let's do a playback. I think I want this to be around here. I could I would extend this just a tiny bit here but not too much Shrink this in, see if we can get that to match the music. And here we need to increase it a tiny bit here. Let's take a look at that. And here as well, extend it just a tiny bit. Here. Now what we can do as well is just to have it a little bit longer if you want to do that we can just copy some of these uh, clips here and we can paste them here. So now we have some just just to fill it up a little bit longer. Uh, this is now only 59 seconds. Let's do a playback. can arrange the order of them so it doesn't look the exact same as the beginning. And 
just to spice it up a little bit more and make it a little bit different, we can go into a few of the clips here and simply reverse them. Uh, this might take some time, so we're gonna come back to O. Let's see what happened. Okay. So this was not reversible. Let's uh, try this one and reverse. Well, I guess we can't reverse them. I'm just gonna keep them as they are then. And uh, let's go on. Okay, so here is where we want to cut the music. So we're gonna cut it here and uh, I'm gonna trim this in. And we have the ending part of the music coming in like this. So what we need to do now is to actually um, go into the music here. I'm gonna go into edit and we're gonna go over to, let's see which one we're gonna use uh, today. We can use, um, we can try, try to use pitch uh, or let's see here. We could use low pass because now they have actually changed the, the way that um, low pass is uh, is working. Before it was, if you made a keyframe here and then you made a keyframe here and you did the changes to this, then you wouldn't have a smooth change from this keyframe to this keyframe. It would just be normal the entire way here and then still normal and normal here as well. And then once you got to the keyframe with the settings, then it would change to um, a lower frequency. Uh, so what we're going to do now is to, we can use uh, low pass and um, the first thing we can do is to actually just find out how low we can go with the cutoff here. So we're going to do a playback. So we can go to around 4000 and we're going to go to uh, this point right here make a keyframe and we're gonna go to the end, make another keyframe and we're gonna take this down to around 270. So if we do a playback now. You can hear the sound is uh, is uh, being uh, deeper and it kind of fades out. You can also change the resonance here as well and just drag it down to make it a little bit more clear. You can take it a little bit further more. Let's see here. Maybe this is a little bit too much here. So we're gonna just delete this and make another one here. We want it to be a little bit faster. I'm going to go to the end and do the same thing. Take this to around 370 and this down to, we can, we can test it out with minus 18. Perfect. So there we have the ending of the music as well. If you want, you can always add a transition across the solve here just to fade it out as well if you want to do that. But we're going to just, we can keep it like that. And let's do one more here. Perfect. Perfect. Uh, we also want to add, uh, actually, we can add a cinematic closing bar to the shot instead. So let's move over to the beginning here. And uh, first, we can go into the audio here and we can do the exact same thing to the beginning. So we want this to, we want to make a keyframe here. Then we want to go to the beginning and we can take the cutoff down here and the same with the resonance. So, perfect. And let's add across this all there as well. I'm gonna lower this a bit and let's test. Sounds good. Now let's move over to titles here. And then we're gonna go over to, this is just a blank box, I guess. Uh, yeah. So we're gonna take this and put up there and we can also do a cinematic bar here. Just 
just gonna cut this at the end. And for this one here, we're gonna go into edit, over to frame and fit, go to the beginning here, make a keyframe and we're gonna take position Y and just pull down to a hundred and uh, let's see here, 180, 181.5 and uh, actually that was wrong but we can go over here and we can make a new keyframe then we can go to the first one here and we're gonna pull this to plus 100 because that will be the center now we can go over to the timeline again and simply duplicate this here place it above go into edit on this one and that we're gonna go to the first one here and we're gonna choose minus 100. Then we're gonna go to the last keyframe here. And since this is plus 181.5, we're gonna do a negative 181.5, like that. So if we move out to the timeline now, you should have the cinematic opening bars. You can also do this with cropping, of course, if you go into uh, this clip here and you just go over to cropping and you do the exact same. Um, a thing by cropping, having the cropping uh, centered like this and then you keyframe it out uh, like that. But I usually make it like this because that's the way, that's basically my workflow. So if we do a playback now, we should have something that looks like this. You can also make them slower if you want to do that by going into each one here and just change the last keyframe here. Just make one at the end and delete the one in the middle. And let's go over to the other one here and do the same thing. I'm going to make one at the end and delete the one in the middle. So let's do another playback. So that looks really, really smooth. Now we want to uh, use uh, these for the end as well. So we're going to highlight them, copy, and we're going to go to the end here and paste. And we're going to drag them to the end like uh, this and this. And we can now go into edit on these uh, layers here and we can go to the beginning and we can change this to uh, or to the, uh, let's see here, beginning. We can delete this and make a new one. Go to the end and take this to 100. I'm gonna do the same with the next one. I'm gonna take this one and just delete that, make a new one and go to the end and then plus 100. So if we take a look at the ending here now, you will have something that looks like this. Now we can also add some uh, transition here as well, some cross dissolve to the video file itself. And then we will have the video file being slowly faded out. Uh, so now we basically have a, a small finished project with uh, some music added as well. Let's take a look at the levels of the music. As you can see here on the left hand side, right here, it's a little bit Let's see, it's a little bit too high, it's peaking towards the red, so we want to change that. So we're gonna keep it at four. Minus four is the audio level that I want to use for this particular song, which, which is needed so it doesn't really blow out anything when anyone is uh, watching. So now we have uh, this project right here and there's basically one more thing or two more things if we want to do that, but I think we're gonna skip the sound effects because it's basically rain and wind, uh, but there is some color grading. And if we take a look at all the footage here, it's basically the same scenery. So it's enough color grading one of the clips, maybe the one which is the darkest, and then copy the color grading and paste on the remaining clips. Or actually we can take the uh, clip which has the most details in it. So that would be probably this one. So we're gonna go on and we're gonna color grade that or this one right here. And we're gonna go over to edit and then we're gonna go to coloring effects and then we're gonna add one original here. 
Um, let's take a look at the uh, levels first. Uh, this works as sort of an S curve, as you can see. We bring up the um, sort of the sharpness of it. And what I'm going to do is to simply just pull this down a tiny bit and drag this towards the left side. Maybe increase it a little bit more to something like that. And if you want, you can add some cinematic fade by changing the black level here. Let's just do a tiny bit here. And we're going to increase the highlights a little bit. Maybe take the brightness and push uh, a little bit down or up. We can do two up, 0 0.02. Contrast, you can pull down if you want more cinematic feel to uh, or cinematic fade to your video. I uh, think we're just going to keep this at plus two. So it's 1.02. Now we have the saturation here. I'm going to bring the saturation down and the vibrance a little bit down too, to something like that. And now we have before and after. I'm going to go down to the shadow amount here and pull a little bit down to minus 30, 0 0.30. And let's go over to the hue here. Uh, let's add some tiny bit of orange into the scenery here because after all, it is full. Just gonna add something like that. And we can correct this with the RGB panel here as well if you want it to be a little bit warmer or cooler. So we're gonna go a little bit warmer on this. And I think we have something there. So now that we finished up the color grading here and apply that to every single clip, we have a more desaturated look to our cinematic GoPro Hero 9 black footage, which is in 5K. And I must say, now we applied a lot of different things we have here at the beginning. We have five different layers with animation, uh, except for this one. Um, we have uh, animation to these two, and we also have color correction uh, and um, a 5k footage here and at the bottom here we have an audio file with effects and as you can see there's no lag whatsoever when we are scrubbing through this again is extremely impressive now let's just scrub through here and see if we have any different uh, lag scenarios or anything like that and there's nothing now there's one more thing i want to test out before we actually render this video so i'm going to check the settings once again Preview is set to best, I'm going to exit this and we're going to do a full playback of this now here on the timeline. And what we're going to do is to actually zoom in here so we have a lot of uh, different uh, uh, footage and files covering the screen once we are doing the playback. So let's go on and tap on play. So as you can see, there literally no lag on playback and on scrubbing. There's nothing. So this is super smooth. And uh, I don't know what to say. And I'm, I'm stoked. I'm so impressed with, uh, with how this worked out with the iPad and with Luma Fusion.
So there you have a full edit in LumaFusion with the 5K footage from GoPro Hero 9 Black. And again, I must say I am extremely extremely impressed of the capability of LumaFusion with GoPro, 5K footage, 100 megabits per second and so on. Keep in mind that the footage which you saw in this video, uh, which you saw in the beginning, is, um, well, it's not the best scenario. With the high bit rate, you could see that we had some uh, flashing uh, artifacts or flashing pixels when we were filming the chairs and the couch uh, out there and uh, this is simply because of everything which is going on there we have the rain pouring down and there's a lot of pixels and every single thing of, of this is going to be converted over to an iPad inside of Luma Fusion, which is not Premiere Pro After Effects Final Cut Da Vinci and all of that so you will and you might experience some issues when filming in low light. You might. I'm not saying you will. Uh, and I'm not saying you won't. But this might happen. And that's uh, what we have to deal with for now. Because of the iPad itself, I guess. Uh, I'm not quite sure. I'm not going to speculate in anything. Um, it could be because of the high bitrate as well. If I lower that down to standard, you might not see... Uh, the artifacts but again I really wanted to test the full 5k capability with the high bitrate and high sharpening and everything to see if the playback and everything was working okay in Luma Fusion. And you tell me, let me know down in the comment section below what you think of the workflow with 5k footage inside of Luma Fusion. Was it smooth enough or could it be smoother? For me it was insane. Uh, like I felt like I had a better editing experience with 5K footage over 4K for some reason. And that goes with 4K on the um, Osmo Action, 4K on the GoPro Hero 8, and 4K on the Sony a7 III, which I'm filming with right now. So, I'm impressed. I'm impressed. This, uh, this works really, really well. And... Uh, I can I can see myself using a lot of 5K footage now in the the future 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 filming a lot with 5K on the GoPro Hero 9 Black and then do some awesome editing in Luma Fusion because the the workflow my experience was <sighs> I had a really good time this is this is a good day except for the rain which is shit I don't I don't, I hate rain it's it's like snow. I'm not like, I, I don't like snow. I don't like, like rain, I like sun, I like tropical environment. I like Hawaii. You know that. I like Hawaii. Uh, so, you, you know, I can't wait to test this in proper lighting. Uh, maybe with some ND filters and, and so on to really get that cinematic feel. So if anyone has some cinematic uh, ND filters for the GoPro Hero 9 that they want to send over my way, please reach out to the uh, uh, collaboration email down in the comments description section below and uh, we can see what we can figure out. Now, free will, if you have made some or Sandmark, if you have made some as well, make sure to send them over if you want and I will gladly test them out. Free will and Sandmark is is what I use for everything. My uh, Osmo Action, Sandmark, my drone, I use Freewell because I find their ND filters the best for me. This is not an ND video, so I think we're gonna wrap up this video right now because it's starting to get tr insanely long. And uh, anyway, I really hope that you enjoyed this video and uh, I hope that you learned a couple of tips and tricks when we did the editing part as well. Let me know in the comment section below if this is something that you want to see more of in the future. Uh, with the GoPro Hero 9 Black 5K, of course, and the more comparison, more testing is coming, as I mentioned in yesterday's uh, video. Now, with that said, hit that subscribe button. That would be highly appreciated. Notification if you want to be part of the notification squad. Uh, give this video a big thumbs up if you enjoyed it and I see you guys in the next video. So now